Welcome to my paint along video of the sewing room. This is a fun little watercolor sketch to give you an intro to the wonders of watercolor. So the first thing I will be doing is laying out the background behind that little lamp that's sitting on the treadle machine. And that's very watered down yellow ochre and a little bit of pink just blended in together, kind of a wa uh, uh, wash. What into what approach? And not too much in back of the sewing machine. It's a little bit of cerulean blue and mostly water, just to indicate that there's a window there and that will dry a lot lighter. So think about watercolor. What you put down there to begin with seems so dark and then give it a few minutes as it dries and it lightens right up. Now I'm just filling in the uh, underneath the dark area of that uh, treadle machine to make that treadle machine pop out. That's going to be very dark later on as I let that dry. In the background of this quilt is a yellow ochre and a lot of water. So the first layer in watercolor is always very, very light. Just a little bit of pigment and more water. It's probably about half and half really. But the first layer is very, very light. You don't want it like acrylic paint. And so after it's, it dries, that first layer, then you come back and go over it again. And that's called glazing. It's a glazing process. So each layer is really quite thin. Again, a little cerulean blue in that mirror. Very, very light. And the curtains are sap green. Again, very light. Just lay that in. And you can blend a little bit of blue with that to give it some variation. Just let it blend together. The center of interest is the quilt and that treadle machine and painting in those little squares reminds me of when I actually uh, sewed that quilt many years ago. The painting of it is almost like quilting it. It's kind of fun. Painting is a lot faster than quilting, I will say that. And so just filling in the colors of this patchwork quilt, very lightly still. A little darker than what I did the background, but not much. This will dry lighter, and I'll go over it again in the same color. But not too solid. I like to leave a few little holes here and there. Not just a solid color. You can always go over it if it is too speckly. looking for anything that's the same color so I don't have to change colors too often. Same greens in the in the curtains as in the patchwork quilt. So I'll just use that same color wherever I see green. Look for the folds in the curtain and they're a little bit darker green, not too much, it's pretty much the same green really. It just goes darker as you do the glazing process. Blend that in with the lines and then soften the edges a little bit. Now 
Now I'm laying in the treadle machine and it's pretty black. But the colors I mix together to get a good dark are ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. So that first layer is kind of a dark gray, really. It's, it's black, but you don't want to paint it solid black. This is the first layer. Go around those little instruments on the treadle, being careful not to mess those up. Later you'll, you'll put a gold color in that. Just go around it at this point. Anything that looks dark. I'm going to use the same color of blue and burnt sienna. It's a good gray color. It's a good black color. If I want it extra dark, I'll add a little bit of that um, alizarin crimson. It's that purpley color, reddish purple color. Now I'm laying in the burnt sienna for the treadle machine. Give it some variation of lighter and darker just to give it some interest. It doesn't have to be just one solid color. A little bit of burnt sienna, a little bit of yellow ochre. Let those colors just blend together while it's wet. While that's drying, I'm going back over the treadle machine. Look how much darker it is the next pass over. Quite a bit darker. And when that dries, I'll probably go over it one more time. leaving a little bit of light around that because there's some reflection on the black machine. That's the top area of the treadle machine. The base, I should say. And now Come back with a little bit of dark color, similar to what you did the treadle, I mean the machine with, that same blue and burnt sienna, and just lay that in. It's pretty solid under, underneath there, solid color. But again, it's several layers of that same color. Don't try to get it dark the first time. Otherwise, it will have a look of kind of a chalky look as it dries. It's better to just do layers. That's the secret with watercolor. Are layers of light washes. Calling it glazing. A little bit of line work on the mechanics of that treadle underneath. Use the tip of your brush just to control the amount of pigment and water on your brush. Don't have it too wet so you have more control with the end of your brush. It's really the secret of watercolor. Besides glazing is just getting the amount on your brush the, the right amount. If you, if you have too wet, then it's sloppy. But when you're at the point where you're going over the wash underneath, like we're doing right here, you have a pretty dry brush. Just wipe it off on the on a tissue, and just get the right consistency, so that you've got a good uh, end of your brush that's doing the work. It's kind of the line work. Sometimes it's called calligraphy even. Okay, back on the quilt. We're gonna get some of that uh, alizarin crimson color and very lightly go 
go over these little squares. Again, this is the first layer. Don't try to fill this in with the dark layer. It's just very light because we're going over this again. You can even come back and put some little speckles in there to give it a calico-y look. <laughs> Is that a word, calico-y? always some little dots and variations when you do calico. There came a point where I had to choose between painting and quilting. I couldn't do both. So I did a lot of quilts over the years. Had fun with quilting, but now I just paint. It's way faster. Just filling in those different colors. You can do any color you want to. You can make it your own quilt. Just follow the lines. On the very, very tip of your brush. Now I'm laying in some folds in that fabric. So it gives a, a good indicator that it's just draped over the treadle machine. You don't want it to look too flat. It has some folds in it. Now here's the second layer coming in for uh, this the pink area of the blocks. Now we're just doing a few little touch-ups here and there. There's some cute little lavender sitting in the in the window to give it a nice touch to tie in some of those uh, red purpley colors in the quilt. And going back over and just touching up a few things to make things stand out a little bit. A little bit of line work. And yet, one more little pass, not too much, in the treadle machine. A little bit of that dark color. Looks like I have forgotten the lamp. I need to work on the lamp as well. That lamp is a good way to tie the colors in as well. Just a very, very slight indication of a window there. Not too much. Now the lamp. Going around the lamp and a little bit darker. There's a shadow that is cast by the lamp itself and the, and the curtain. Just those little flowers and it looks like a stained glass uh, lamp shade. It goes really well with that quilt. Now just a few more touch-ups on the frame, that little mirror on the right side. And touching up drapes, a few more line work, and that's, that pretty much wraps it up. I hope you had fun painting this little treadle machine. Happy painting!